Well, for more on this, Richard Bean is joining us, the Executive Director of the School of Wildlife Conservation and joins us live now from Kenya. Thank you so very much indeed for joining us. So this sounds like fantastic news. I think on the face of it, it is. I think, um, you know, the, the, the approach to conservation, particularly in places like Africa, but globally, traditionally, has been very focused on uh, single species. So that tends to be charismatic species, such as rhinos or elephants or lions, species that people can relate to. I think the fact that we've been able to recover rhinos um, at least to some extent, particularly in Africa, but also um, some parts of Asia, is, uh, you know, it's a signal to the fact that single species conservation can work, but it doesn't reflect the fact that the globe continues to lose biodiversity as a whole at an incredibly fast rate. So these are isolated success stories, and I'm afraid that's the reality. And they come at huge cost. Um, conserving rhinos is is an incredibly costly exercise because of the security that has to be provided for that to happen. And not everybody can do it, and that in turn limits uh, the amount of kind of conservation space that can be allocated to rhinos. So mm. it's a very complex uh, problem, but of course we must celebrate uh, this particular success. So cost is a big problem, as you say, and a challenge, of course, but is poaching the biggest problem of all and stopping it, and how can this be done? Um, when you're talking about rhinos, other species such as elephants, um, poaching is definitely, definitely a massive issue. I mean, the rhino populations, for example, in Kruger National Park in South Africa have probably decreased, as far as anyone can tell, by as much as 50 or 60 percent over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and I think maybe perhaps, you know, that, that situation has now been stabilized. But, but poaching is the big issue. Um, and, and that is uh, poaching happens as a result of demand for rhino horn, which is exported to the Far East, uh, where it's in high demand for use uh, in traditional uh, medicines and for other purposes. Um, but, but generally speaking, if you talk about biodiversity as a whole, there are many other threats to biodiversity, including um, overexploitation, um, loss of habitat, uh, pollution, uh, massive use of agrochemicals such as pesticides and herbicides. Uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So the threats to biodiversity are, are generally massive, uh, something that I think the world is beginning to wake up to. Mm. You've mentioned a few of the problems there, such as pollution, pesticides. What about the climate factor? Yeah, of course, climate, climate, and, climate and nature are inextricably linked. And of course, there are going to be ecosystems uh, that are going to be affected by changes in the climate. The coral, coral reefs of the world are a classic example of that to the point that if we don't uh, manage to control uh, global warming, then we could probably lose 80% of the coral reefs of the world. And, you know, I think the thing that people need to understand is the impact this will have on humanity. I think a lot of people think of biodiversity as a kind of luxury uh, that we don't really need, but it's nice to have. In fact, it's completely the opposite. What biodiversity does is produce what are referred to as ecosystem services. So what do I mean by that? It's things like food, it's insect pollination of crops, it's all that kind of stuff, which is actually of incredible value to humanity. And we need to do something pretty urgently to reverse the losses that we're currently uh, experiencing on the planet. Mm. And if we go back to the positives here, the numbers of black rhinos have increased by nearly 5% last year. You're the former managing director of the largest black rhino sanctuary in East Africa. What do you think is behind this success? Uh, it's... it's um... It's a massive focus on rhinos as a, as a kind of signature species. Um, it's the deployment of, um, uh, you know, uh, significant uh, advanced um, sort of highly capable security measures. Um, it's the support of government. It's, um, it's, it's, it's huge amounts of money um, that, uh, you know, need to be deployed if you're going to be able to safeguard rhinos in particular against um, poaching gangs. So it's a combination of different things. But the pictures you're just showing at the moment are, 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 are interesting. Some of those are from Old Pegeter, and I think I saw a picture in the background of the last two remaining northern white rhinos on the planet. So yes, we've done well with black rhinos. Yes, we've done well with southern white rhinos in some parts of Africa. But the northern white rhino, which used to occur across central Africa, is basically extinct. 
Uh, most definitely, it's functionally extinct. There are only two left in the world. So again, we just have to contextualize this. There are some isolated successes. They come at great cost. But there are also, unfortunately, still some major challenges ahead. All right. Well, Richard, thank you so very much indeed for your expertise. The Executive Director of the School of Wildlife Conservation joining us from Kenya Today Live. Thank you.